Welcome to Module 48 in this series of lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. We're talking about 2 to the p factorial studies. We've introduced the basic ideas and notation and have defined uh, the so-called main effects, two-factor interactions, three-factor interactions, and so on for uh, P-way two-factor studies. Uh, in this module, we're going to uh, talk about a, a, a very slick uh, little algorithm called the Yates algorithm uh, that can be used to compute uh, the effects in the fitted effects in a factorial study. Uh, not so much because uh, it's something that uh, is better than using uh, a spreadsheet or a computer program to do the computation, uh, but because of intuition that it provides and uh, it and and, a, and the kind of uh, kind of layout of the effects that it that it provides. So. Here's the basic idea. Uh, if we're talking about two to the p studies, uh, we really only need one fitted effect of each type. So for example, if I have a number two, then a, a number one is minus a number two. If I have ab22, then I know how to get ab11, ab12, ab21 from that by an appropriate number of sign switches according to how many indices I have to change. If I have the three-factor interaction ABC222, two, 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 um, then I have all eight of the uh, ABC three-factor interactions, again, by an appropriate number of sign changes according to how many indices I have to switch going from uh, 222 two, two to the uh, uh, particular combination that's, a, that, that's of interest. So if I can put my hands on all of these, uh, then I can, uh, then I essentially have all of the fitted, fitted effects. Uh, we can get these things by hand all at once uh, using the Gates algorithm. And as I say, uh, it's not so much that one wants to do computations by hand as it is the intuition that the uh, output of the Yates algorithm pro provides, uh, and uh, it, 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 it amounts to a kind of uh, working on the data and getting a sense for what the data is saying actually going through the, the Yates algorithm. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a good basic uh, method of, of, of data analysis. So here's what one does. In the first place, one lists the uh, factorial, the 2 to the p factorial combinations in a particular order, in so-called Yates standard order. One begins with combination 1, which is all factors at their low level, and then lists combination A, which is A at its high level, everything else at its low level. If one can remember that much, then uh, it's easy to figure out how to get the next two because one just sort of uh, takes one and a and uh, thinks about quote unquote multiplying by b. So I have one a, one gets multiplied by b and becomes b, a multiplied by b gets me a b. Once I've got these, uh, I get the next four by multiplying uh, these four by C. So 1 by C is C, uh, A by C is AC, B by C is BC, uh, AB a, by C is ABC, and so on. If I had four factors, I would take these eight and multiply by D, uh, and so on. So one writes down combinations in this particular peculiar uh, so-called Yates standard order. Uh, then one lists the corresponding Y bars. And so here are the Y bars for this uh, 
box hunter and hunter pilot plan example. And what one does is go to work on those Y bars doing additions and subtractions in pairs. And so if I add, first of all, in pairs, 60 and 72 is 132. 54 and 68 added together is 122. 52 and 83 added together is 135. 45 and 80 added together is 125. So I'm going to do additions and subtractions in pairs. I've just done all the additions for that first column, for that column of Y bars. Now I do subtractions. Uh, and here's the only place that uh, you can really sort of get confused or messed up here. Um, one wants to do subtraction, subtracting the top value in a pair from the bottom. So 72 minus 60 is 12. 68 minus 54 uh, is 14. 83 minus 52 is 31. 80 minus 45 is 35. That is quote unquote cycle one of the uh, Yates algorithm for a three-factor study. Uh, one does the same thing now to the result of cycle one that one did to the Y bars. So adds in pairs to get these numbers then subtracts in pairs, subtracting the top guy from the bottom guy. So 130, 122 minus 132 is minus 10. And I've got to be careful to carry that sign. 125 minus 135 is again minus 10. I have to record the sign. 14 minus 12 uh, is 2. 35 minus 31 is 4. That is a second cycle. I make the number of I make a number of cycles equal to the number of factors. So if I'm doing analysis of a uh, two to the three factorial, uh, if I have three factors, then I need to make three cycles. And so here is the third cycle of the Yates additions and subtractions. And now I'm going to divide by I'm going to divide the results in this column by 2 to the p. So for this uh, particular uh, example, we have three factors, so I'm going to divide by 8. 514 divided by 8 is 64.25. 92 divided by 8 is 11.5, and so on. Now, What's really interesting and quite slick about this is that what I've just produced by taking cycle number three and dividing by two cubed, if there were four factors, it would be cycle number four divided by two to the fourth. If there were five, it would be cycle five divided by uh, two to the fifth, is the grand average A number two, B number two, AB two two, C number 2, AC22, BC22, and ABC222. Now, that's a fairly painless way to do all of those computations of additions and subtractions of Y bars and effects and so on that we looked at in the in module 47. Of course, it's not uh, it's not any more painless than simply getting a computer program to do the computations. But what is really quite helpful is this list over here, because it very nicely summarizes uh, what we get uh, out of computing effects for this, uh, this example. Uh, I can easily look down this list of numbers and say, well, what's the biggest thing going on here? Well, the biggest thing going on seems to be this A2, this A main effects. The next biggest thing seems to be the AC two-factor interactions. And maybe 
the B main effect, uh, B, uh, B, num B number two. But in terms of magnitude, the biggest thing are A main effects and AC two-factor interactions. And, and relative to that, and of course there's the grand mean here that's 64.25, but that's not one of the factor effects. Uh, relative to the A main effects and the AC two-factor interactions, uh, the other uh, fitted effects are really of, of are really fairly small. So what I've just said uh, to you orally is written down here. Uh, the most important determiner of yield is factor A. Uh, the impact of changing catalyst, that is the impact of changing level of factor C, depends upon which uh, level of A is being used. That is the next most important thing to the A main effect is this two-factor interaction. Uh, the effect of concentration, that is factor B, is smaller. It seems to be independent in the sense that there are no interactions with B involved. That is, there's no there's no big BC interaction. There's no big AC interaction. I'm sorry. There's there's no. Let's try that again. There's no big interactions with B, and so there's no uh, big BC interaction. There's no big AB interaction. There's no th big three-factor interaction involving B. So the interpretation that I make of that is that, in terms of a uh, of a system here that has three factors, uh, what factor C, what what factors A and C do is more or less linked by this two-factor interaction, but what factor B does, uh, changing. Uh, concentration is it doesn't depend upon uh, what levels of A and C that I'm talking about. Uh, it's useful after computing these fitted effects to think about well what would be uh, what would be produced for output from this system if I ignored all of the small effects. So for example if I Ignored everything except uh, the big numbers in this in this last column. Uh, that's more or less like what one does in regression analysis. Uh, one fits a model that starts with a lot of predictor variables and, and fits fits a simple model and ignores the uh, effects of uh, the the least important variables and then tries to predict uh, a response. Uh, you can actually use a quote-unquote reverse version of the Yates algorithm uh, to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that here. Instead, I'm, I'm going to just use some simple additions. Uh, and that works this way. Uh, if I want to think about a explanation or a description of this system that says, well, there are A main effects, B main effects, uh, and AC interactions. Uh, what would I have for responses? Well, I would say that a prediction for a response at level I of A, J of B, and C of K would be a grand average plus an A main effect plus a B main effect and AI plus a BJ plus an ACIK. Uh, so for example, if we talk about the all low combination of factors A, B, and C, that is uh, first level of A, first level of B, first level of C, uh, the fitted or the predicted value uh, for uh, response would be uh, a grand average plus A number one plus B number one plus AC number one number one one and that turns out to be uh, 60.25. Uh, interestingly enough, if you track that back to the original data set, uh, y hat for uh, sorry, y hat 
for AC11, uh, well, that's combination uh, one, and combination one is a Y bar that's 60. So we get back to something pretty close to uh, 60. We get 60.25 uh, from that uh, computation.